within days of my return to the Ministry of Finance, I had declared that our objectives were fiscal consolidation, price stability, self-sufficiency in food, reviving the growth cycle, enhancing investments, promoting manufacturing, encouraging exports, quickening the pace of implementation of projects and finding practical solutions to certain stress sectors such as petroleum, power, coal, highways and textiles. Let me begin with the good news. The fiscal deficit for 2013-14 will be contained at 4.6% of GDP, well below the red line that I had drawn last year. More importantly, the current account deficit that threatened to exceed last year's CAD of US dollars 88 billion will be contained at US dollars 45 billion. And I'm happy to inform the House that we expect to add about US dollars 15 billion to the foreign exchange reserves by the end of the financial year. Analysts and waiting agencies had acknowledged our efforts some months ago and no longer speak about a downgrade. I hope that domestic experts will now agree that the UPA government meant what it said when it put fiscal stability at the top of the agenda. Going forward, I appeal to all political parties to join me in the pledge that we shall not, we shall never do anything that will affect the stability of the foundations of India's economy. Last year, when I read the budget speech, WPI headline inflation stood at 7.3% and core inflation at 4.2%. Through the year, inflation saw its ups and downs. At the end of January 2014, WPI inflation was 5.05% and core inflation 3%. Both the government and the RBI have acted in tandem. While our efforts have not been in vain, there is still some, some distance to go. Food inflation is still the main worry, although it has declined sharply from a high of 13.6% to 6.2%. Ask this guy to go back. Come on, one guy will start off the parliament. We are proud of the stellar performance of the agriculture sector. Food grain production in 2012-13 was 255 million tons and the estimate for the current year is 263 million tons. Estimates of production of sugarcane, cotton, pulses, oil seeds and quality seeds point to new records. Agricultural exports in 2012-13 stood at US dollars 41 billion versus imports of US dollars 20 billion. In 2013-14, agricultural exports are likely to cross US dollars 45 billion. Agricultural credit is likely to touch 7,35,000 crore rupees, exceeding the target of rupees 7 lakh crore. Agricultural GDP growth increased to 3.1% in the five-year period of UPA 1 and further to 4% in the first four years of UPA 2. In the current year, agricultural GDP growth is estimated at 4.6%. Even after the slowdown, the savings rate was 31.3% in 2011-12 and 30.1% in 2012-13. The corresponding investment rate was 35.5% and 34.8% respectively, indicating there was no steep decline in investment except in mining and manufacturing. If the incremental capital output ratio had remained more or less the same, the outcome should have been a growth rate higher than the 6.7% and the 4.5% reported so far by the CSO for the two years, but that did not happen. It was obvious that projects were not achieving commercial operation date and there were too many obstacles on the path of implementation. At a time when it appeared that a number of projects would fall because of the logjam, Government took the bold step to set up the Cabinet Committee on Investment and the Project Monitoring Group. Thanks to the swift decisions taken by them, by the end of January 2014, the way was cleared for completing 296 projects 
with an estimated project cost of rupees 660000 crore exports have recovered sharply and the recovery must be seen in the context of growth of global trade declining from 6.1% in 2011 to 2.7% in 2013 India's merchandise exports reached a level of US dollars 300.4 billion in 2012-13, registering a negative growth of 1.8% over the previous year. Though 2013-14 began on a pessimistic note, I'm happy to inform the House that the year will end with estimated merchandise exports of US dollars 326 billion, indicating a growth rate of 6.3%. However, imports are down and this does not augur well for either manufacturing or domestic trade. Our aim must be robust growth in both exports and imports with trade and balance over a period of time. Manufacturing is the Achilles heel of the Indian economy. The deceleration in investment in manufacturing is particularly worrying. Consequently, there is no uptick yet in manufacturing. The national manufacturing policy has set the goal of increasing the share of manufacturing in GDP to 25% and to create 100 million jobs over a decade. Eight national investment and manufacturing zones have been announced along the Delhi-Mumbai Industrial Corridor and nine projects have been approved by the DMIC Trust. Five NIMZs outside DMIC have also been given in principle approval. Three more corridors connecting Chennai and Bengaluru, Bengaluru and Mumbai and Amritsar and Kolkata are under different stages of preparatory work. Additional capacities are being installed in major manufacturing industries such as steel, cement, refinery, power and electronics. Several measures have been taken to promote micro, small and medium enterprises including notifying a public procurement policy, establishing technology centers and common facility centers and launching the Kazi mark. We have given a big push to infrastructure and capacity addition in infrastructure industries. In 2012-13 and in the nine months of the current financial year, we have added 29,350 megawatts of power capacity, 3,928 kilometers of national highways, 39,144 kilometers of rural roads under PMGSY, 3,343 kilometers of new railway track, and 217.5 million tons of capacity per annum in our ports. Besides, 19 oil and gas blocks were given out for exploration and seven new airports are under construction. We have also facilitated infrastructure debt funds to provide takeout finance for infrastructure projects and ease the pressure on the banking system. Risk to capital flows Thank you. Risk to capital flows were accentuated due to volatile global conditions and the indication in May 2013 of a reduction in asset purchases by the US Federal Reserve. The rupee came under pressure. <coughs> <laughs> Government, RBI and SEBI undertook a number of measures to facilitate capital inflows and stabilize the foreign exchange market. Among emerging economy currencies, the rupee was affected least when the actual reduction took place in December 2013 and January 2014. Honourable members will recall that the slowdown began in 2011-12. In nine quarters, the GDP growth rate declined from 7.5% in Q1 of 2011-12 to 4.4% in Q1 of 2013-14. Thanks to the numerous measures that I have narrated, I was confident that the decline will be arrested and the growth cycle will turn in the second quarter. Madam, I believe I have been vindicated. Growth in Q2 of 2013-14 has been placed at 4.8% and growth for the whole year has been estimated at 4.9%. This means that growth in Q3 and Q4 of 2013-14 will be at least 5.2%.
I can confidently assert that the economy is more stable today than what it was two years ago. The fiscal deficit is declining. The current account deficit has been constrained. Inflation is moderated. The quarterly growth rate is on the rise. The exchange rate is stable. Exports have increased and hundreds of projects have been unblocked. Madam Speaker, all this is a result of hard work. I may add, among other mentors, my mother and Harvard taught me the value of hard work. Over the last 10 years, the UPA governments have gently nudged India and Indians into accepting that growth is an imperative, that it must be made more inclusive and converted into development, and that the growth model, in order to be sustainable, must address other concerns such as environment, intergenerational equity, indebtedness, ownership and control of resources, financing, etc. The UPA government's record on growth is unparalleled. Madam, 10 years ago, we produced 213 million tons of food grains. Today, we produce 263 million tons of food grains. Ten years ago, the installed power capacity was 1,12,700 megawatts. Today, it is 2,34,600 megawatts. Ten years ago, coal production was 361 million tons per year. Today, we produce 554 million tons per year.